Good day, boys and girls, and this will be the last video for term one. It's quite exciting. So we've learned about uh, aesthetics and ergonomics. We learned about products. We've learned about the different sketches that we needed to make. We learned about hydraulics and pneumatics. And now for the last week, we are going to put all of our work together and we're going to look at designing products. And we're going to use the design process to do this. So let's start. The first step is investigate the problem. If you look at a scenario, you will have to see what is the problem in the scenario and how can you solve it. And obviously your product is going to be the thing that solves the problem. So you need to really look at the scenario, understand the scenario, find out what the problem is, find out how to solve the problem. Next, you do design specifications. This is where you ask a lot of questions. Questions like, what should your product be able to do? How much is it going to cost? What materials should you use? What steps are you going to follow? And many more. The more questions you ask, the better you will understand your product. At the end of this step, if you go to a stranger at the, in, in the streets and you ask that person question, or that person asks you questions and you answer that person, that person must have a full idea of what your product is and what it is supposed to do. So you have to do this step thoroughly. Next, design constraints. This is where you look at what your product can not do. Okay, so when you ask questions, for example, can my, can my um, product be moved? It's too heavy. No, it cannot move. Uh, my product cannot stand in the rain because it will rust, etc. Anything that your product does not or cannot do, anything that constrains your product, this is what you write down here. At the end of step two and step three, you must know what your product can and cannot do. You've done step one, understand the problem. Step two, understand your product. Step three, understand what your product cannot do. Now it's time to start drawing or designing your product. Now you're going to use everything you've learned so far. Freehand sketch, working sketch, 3D oblique drawings and vanishing point sketches. All of these sketches you're going to use now when you design your product. Once you've designed your product, you're going to make or build your product. Once you've built your product, you're going to test it. And when you evaluate or test your product, you need to see, did it solve the problem? Has it done what it was supposed to do? And if it did, great. If it didn't, this is what you should do. You redesign, build again, evaluate again, and if it still doesn't work, you redesign, build again, evaluate again until it works perfectly. When it works perfectly, there's one more step for you to do, and that is to communicate. Mostly you will work in groups. So you'll have to ask, what did we as a group do well? And what did we as a group not do very well? What could we have done better? and etc etc this helps you as a person working in a group to better understand people better understand product design and also just working with others so that you can build the best product at the best amount of time that you have right so this was the design process usually we would have been building hydraulic systems now your teacher could always show you how one of these would look and you can go try it at home but because of the COVID-19 um, and we can't work in groups we are not going to do it this year but it is still important to know the design process because I'm pretty sure we have a lot of designers in our classroom